A property boom during the lockdown. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee, we're going to look at this article from realestate.com.au which is discussing the prospect of a property boom during the lockdown. You know, chances of a COVID era bargain evaporate as sellers sit on the fence. Well, people are being forced to sell, everyone. Let's start by having a look at the current property prices. We can see here we have the capital city prices and what are we, I'm just going to Hold on, bring up my full screen. So we're one million and ninety-two bucks for all houses, nine hundred and eighty-nine thousand for three bedders. Now this is all capital cities. We can see apartments are sitting a bit lower. If we look at national, that's bringing in the regional cities as well. We're seeing six eighty-three for all houses and five ninety-seven uh, for five seventy-nine. So nearly six hundred thousand for three bedders, guys. So you can see they've climbed up since well recent data. You know, just just a year ago, they're generally going up. Remember when we had, you know, modeling from the RBA of a potential decline of 40%, they were testing it. The banks warning of 15%, 10%, 5% falls. Everyone was afraid and concerned. Have a look here at Sydney prices. Look at that spike. Here's good old Melbourne. And my town, Brisbane. Everything is heading up. If you go in the regions, guys, Mobar. I'll refresh it here. I'll reload. There you go. Look at that. You know, it's going crazy, everyone. So the bargains are not materializing. The falls are not manifesting. Well, for a number of reasons. Well, we have, you know, had had a recession. Government has come to the rescue. Home builder. Look at building approvals. Look at that skyrocket. The number of building approvals, everyone. And, well, unemployment, it's crashing down. Don't, don't, don't worry about the government debt. Don't worry about that. No, no one cares about it. They're not worried about that. That's not, not something that they are concerned with. They're just more worried about dealing with everything now. So it looks like those of you that are hoping and waiting for a correction in the property sector, well, it looks like we're getting the opposite, everyone. And now, because I mean, everyone can agree that the cost of property with regards to wages, well, it, it's quite... Difficult for someone on normal wages or even median and below to get in the market. And that, that's because we really have, there really is a big difference in income levels here in Australia. If you look at this chart, you can see the top there. Top households are over two grand a week. Bottom, 433. That, that's just showing you there, right there. That's why some people aren't even being impacted by these lockdowns, by these restrictions. That uh, you know, they're doing well enough. They've got enough money. They've got it flowing in. That's the K-shaped recovery here in Australia, or not really the recovery, the economy. So let's look at this article. Sydney home seekers' chances of getting a lockdown bargain have evaporated in the face of another surge in buy demand. Property sales data has revealed house hunters are facing even more competition at auction than they were before the city lockdown began, despite the weaker economy and restrictions on movement. Buyers before lockdown were coming against an average of four or five other bidders at auction, but that number has since shot up to eight. It's competition, supply and demand, and the increased competition has made it made a difference. Preliminary core logic indicators show Sydney's median house price, based on sales of houses, townhouses and units, were on track to finish July near 2% higher. The average home selling at auction has delivered the vendors a price of 150000 over the reserve, an incredible jump considering agent rep- reports of vendors inflating their expectations to ridiculous levels. Well, what's considered ridiculous may be considered a bargain in a few years' time if it keeps going the way it is. Strong buyer competition has been observed even in the Sydney LGAs with the strictest lockdown measures. In uh, Panania, part of the COVID-hit Canterbury-Bankstown region, a buyer paid $1.156 million for a house on Drake Street on Thursday, a new suburb record for a three-bedroom duplex. Could this be, well, either developers? Could this be hope that if everything goes good, 
You know, once we hit that magic 80%, everything opens up, and then you get a flood of people coming into Australia, that it's just going to be a boom. Could that be what people are anticipating? Or are they concerned with the potential for hyperinflation so they want to get their money into physical assets? And property is Aussie gold. So it was one of only 10 available houses in what's normally one of Sydney, of Sydney's suburbs with the highest volume of sales. Properties were also selling faster during the lockdown, partly because of mass of sellers pulling their properties from the market, leaving buyers with fewer homes to choose from. CoreLogic data showed there have been about 200 properties withdrawn from auction every week since the lockdown started, while the volume of listings dropped by about 20%. My housing market economist, Andrew Wilson, said the lockdown was likely to extend the current upswing in home prices. Growth in prices had been on track to peter out by year end, but would likely continue into 2022 due to lockdowns driving down listings, Mr. Wilson said. Ray White, chief economist, Nerida Conisby, said the lack of new listings at a time of still elevated demand meant buyers outnumbered properties. Auctioneer Damien Cooley, a partner in auction streaming platform Auction Now, he'd be loving all of this, said buyers were getting more comfortable bidding at online auctions after 18 months of living with the pandemic. Buyers saw what happened after the last lockdown when there was a real strong market and it kept getting stronger, he said. There is an expectation that there will be a rise again when we get out of this. On Wednesday night, the sellers of a home in North Shore's South Taramara got $2.45 million for a house they bought for $1.8 million last year. Not bad. 620000 price increase in less than a year, and auctioneer Clarence White revealed they spent 50000 on upgrades. This is one way to 10x your money, guys. You don't need crypto. None of that dodgy stuff. None of those, you know, uh, meme coins. Forget about that. <laughs> Just... Buy an Australian property. Then you can 10x your investment. What do you reckon? Oh, boy. There you go. What's the solution to all of this? Well, I don't know if there is a solution, everyone. I don't know if there is. Until supply starts increasing and people are jumping back on the market, I don't know if we're going to see it. Because, well, you've got government interventions coming to the rescue. Hang on, let me bring up here where they are just keeping, keeping, hang on, you know, the whole loan deferrals are back again, everyone. The, the, the banks have agreed, and you know, this is quasi-government interventions, but the banks have agreed they're not going to force anyone, no, no forced sales. So if people are sitting at home, then they probably don't want to sell now because it's going to be a terrible time to move. People are probably just looking because they either want to invest or they're forced to. Can you blame people for not selling? They probably want a bit more certainty. So I, I can't see, I can't see it returning to normal. And can we get off this property addiction? If a first recession we've had in 28 years, a global pandemic, shutting down of the borders, shutting down of the economy, locking the economy down again and again and again and again. And property still goes up. Well, because we know why. Because property is the government's cash cow, the piñata that they'll keep bashing. We've seen Labour is pulling away from removing negative gearing at the next election. They're stepping away from that policy. So is it just going to be more of the same? Feels like it. What do you reckon? As always, thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one in the comments down below. If you're a fan and enjoy the content I create here, there are a few ways you can support us. You can join us on YouTube or Patreon, sign up for Self Wealth or Stake, use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve or Aussie Broadband, buy a merch from Heiser Says, use Gold Pass from the Perth Mint or support us via PayPal. Take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.